In ultraviolet light, a technician purifies the very essence of life. Scientists have acquired profound new abilities. They can read the secret code of life and change its genetic structure. The greatest of mysteries may soon be solved. We could discover how a human being develops from a single egg. We might even find out what causes life. In a laboratory in San Francisco, seven scientists have joined forces on a fantastic quest. They are seeking to penetrate the mysteries of life. They can take the stuff of life out of cells, dissect it in a test tube, and begin unlocking its deepest secrets. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Beyond the outer planets of our solar system, space curves off into the vast abyss of the universe. Scientists believe our universe exploded into being some 15 billion years ago. It formed countless galaxies of a hundred billion stars. On our planet, life developed over three billion years. It evolved from simple virus-like particles to plants, animals, and the incredibly complex organism that is man. Since the dawn of history, people have wondered, what is the essence of life? Several hundred years ago, pioneers with microscopes discovered the basic building block of life, the cell. Cells are the primary unit of life. 100 trillion cells comprise a human being. Billions of muscle cells, skin cells, nerve cells, and blood cells, all working together to orchestrate our every movement. The most remarkable ability of the cell is its capacity to grow and divide. Fertilized egg cells begin the process of development that in 21 days will culminate in the birth of baby mice. What marvelous control system governs this miracle of growth? What mysterious forces cause the development of a heart? Since the early 1950s, the science of biology has undergone a revolutionary change Scientists have begun to unravel the innermost secrets of the cell. Within each cell are tiny structures called chromosomes. They contain the information cells need to live and grow. Just before cells divide, these chromosomes copy themselves exactly. They transmit the blueprint of life from generation to generation. The chromosomes are composed of thousands of incredibly small units called genes. The genes order the cell to make molecules which are vital to life. Genes are made of a molecule called DNA. Its twisted strands store the genetic information in a simple code. DNA is composed of only four chemical units endlessly repeated in various combinations. The magic of DNA is how these simple units determine all the forms of life we know. The wonder of DNA is most obvious in the phenomenal likeness of identical twins. Each girl has inherited precisely the same set of genetic instructions. They are what they are because of some 100,000 genes written in the language of DNA. So incredibly precise is this genetic code that Lisa and Ingrid are alike down to their freckles and the tiny nicks on their ears. 
As scientists expand their knowledge of the code of life, it is becoming easier to change life, to alter its genetic structure. Chromosomes, genes, and DNA are tiny chunks of matter. They can be engineered, cut up, and rearranged in endless combinations. The technology can be developed. Some of it already exists. In dealing with human life, biologists are much more limited. Once a child is born, its genetic structure is fixed, unchangeable. If the genetic instructions are faulty, little can be done. The result could be a crippling disease. It is possible, however, to detect some genetic defects during pregnancy. Because her risk increases with age, this woman has decided to have a test. An obstetrician withdraws some fluid from the sac surrounding the growing fetus. In the fluid are a few of its cells. The cells are added to a nutrient broth in which they can live and grow. Placed in an incubator, the cells multiply until there are enough for the test. A technician searches for cells in which the chromosomes are easy to see. She checks the size and shape of each one. In this case, the chromosomes looked perfectly normal. However, when the genetic structure of healthy cells is damaged, the result may be cancer. Normal genes switch off while malignant genes switch on. Renegade cells grow out of control. They invade the tissues around them and form tumors. The fast growing tumor on this mouse's back will rapidly kill it. At the Lawrence Livermore lab, some of the tumor cells are removed. Their DNA is stained with a special dye. When the blue laser beam hits the DNA, it causes tiny flashes of light. These flashes are detected electronically. Their pattern is typical of cancer cells, which have more DNA than normal cells. The scientists have another extremely sensitive way to check chromosomes. An electronic scanner hooked up to a computer forms pictures which show the precise amount of DNA in each chromosome. So exact is this system that it tells the difference between chromosomes inherited from the mother and those from the father. With such computerized technology, we begin our journey into advanced genetic research. To probe the mysteries of cell division, a powerful laser beam is used to perform surgery on cells and chromosomes. Dr. Michael Burns of the University of California at Irvine has developed this remarkable technique of genetic engineering. A lens focuses the laser light into a tiny beam which cuts through cells like a microscopic scalpel. The beam is so precise that it can be aimed at individual chromosomes and even used to snip off pieces containing a few genes. Dr. Burns finds two chromosomes and hits them with the laser. The cell is not destroyed. It continues to divide, but the chromosomes hit by the laser are expelled. Their messages will not be passed on to other cells. What comes next is another amazing feat of microsurgery, the manipulation of cells a thousandth of an inch across. Carefully, all the cells around the one hit by the laser are scraped away. A nutrient fluid is added so that the single cell remaining can reproduce itself. Over the next few weeks, that single cell will divide into a colony of identical cells. Mysteriously, the destroyed chromosome is replaced by the remaining ones thus restoring normal chromosome number to the cells. Other biologists have developed more precise techniques of genetic engineering. 
They can chop DNA molecules into pieces without destroying the molecule's ability to play the game of life. If they could link up these pieces in the right combination, they might solve the mysteries of the gene. If they could insert bits of DNA into living cells, they could create forms of life with new genetic structures. Their testing ground has been a tiny bacterium called E. coli. It lives in the human intestine where its functions are largely unknown. The molecular biologists have found a way to splice genes from animals and plants into E. coli's well-known genetic structure. So cooperative are these bacteria that they willingly accept the foreign DNA and copy it as if it were their own. A revolution in medicine may be on the horizon. Already, gene splicing is being used to attack the human disease of diabetes. Scientists' long-time dream of genetic engineering is at hand. They are getting closer to the secrets of life. Since the discovery of DNA, biologists have been manipulating the very essence of life. Today, they can take DNA out of one cell and insert it into another. They can even mix the genes of different species. By transplanting animal genes into bacteria, they hope to find out how these genes work and are controlled. The process begins when a strain of bacteria is given an ample supply of food and gently shaken. In less than 24 hours, each bacterium can multiply 100 billion fold. After the bacteria are harvested, a detergent bursts open their cell walls and sticky DNA strands spill out. Most of the DNA clumps together in a disorderly tangle. But nearby are tiny loops of DNA called plasmids. They are the key to the new technology of gene splicing. They will accept any genes the biologists can stitch into them. A fast-spinning centrifuge separates the plasmids from the rest of the DNA. Under ultraviolet light, a fluorescent dye makes the plasmid band visible. Carefully, the precious plasmids are removed. Now come the most crucial steps. In this simulation, a special enzyme is added to the plasmids. Like a pair of microscopic scissors, it snips open their DNA molecules at specific points. Other snipped genes can now be added to the open plasmid loops. The foreign DNA joins the plasmids, creating a new DNA molecule. The resulting loops, called recombinant DNA, combine animal genes with bacterial genes. They will be reinserted into other bacteria, giving those bacteria new genes. When the bacteria multiply, their new blueprint is copied over and over. Thus, science can make life forms with new combinations of genes. Dr. William Rutter is chairman of the biochemistry department at the University of California, San Francisco. The possibilities for recombinant DNA technology are simply enormous. Not only are we going to revolutionize the understanding of the human genome and for genetics in, in general, but we will have profound effects on many aspects of biomedical science. Over 40 million people are affected by the genetic disease called diabetes. 
In the United States alone, more than a million people inject insulin each day in order to stay alive. This insulin comes from the pancreas gland of animals. It is in short supply worldwide and often produces undesirable side effects. My colleagues and I have been studying the expression of the insulin gene in the embryonic rat pancreas for several years. And one day I attended a faculty meeting in which Herbert Boyer and Howard Goodman were discussing their work on recombinant DNA. This excited me a great deal, and I cornered these two individuals after the meeting and said, Herb and Howard, we, must, we just must clone the insulin gene. What the scientists proposed to do would have seemed impossible 10 years ago. Of the thousands of genes in each cell of the laboratory rat, they wanted to isolate the single gene that makes insulin in the rat's pancreas gland. Then they would transplant this gene into bacteria, hoping to create a microbe with the insulin-producing ability of a mammal. If they could make it work for the insulin gene, it might become possible to make dozens of important hormones and drugs. A group of scientists at the university began to collaborate on the experiments. So we obtained the insulin producing cells from several hundred rats and extracted from them the chemicals from which we could get the DNA. Axel Ulrich took this material, inserted it into a plasmid, and placed the plasmid into a strain of bacteria that could only grow in the laboratory. These steps of the experiment were carried out under strict conditions of containment. Howard Goodman is professor of biochemistry at the University of California, San Francisco. We had been working on the cloning of rat insulin for about a year. We had many technical difficulties and we began to overcome them. But it wasn't until the moment I saw this film, which was the analysis of the gene that we had cloned, that we really knew we had the rat insulin gene in the bacterium. The next step is to show that the genes which we have transplanted to the bacterium can actually work and produce insulin. We'll then try to insert human genes into bacteria instead of the rat genes. If we can get these genes to work, this would provide a virtually inexhaustible supply of human insulin, much better than animal insulin since it would have no undesirable side effects. Eventually, in a generation or so, we might be able to do something which is really fantastic. It might be possible to rejuvenate the defective cells in the diabetics so that they would produce insulin in a normal fashion. Thus, the disease would be cured. In the future, bacteria modified with recombinant DNA may be grown in industrial amounts. The bacteria could produce hormones like insulin and other important drugs. New, fast-growing strains of bacteria or algae could be used in vast amounts as animal feed or fuel. A whole new technology will be needed to pick the desired bacteria. Information will be used to inoculate, incubate, and photograph bacteria. The system produces thousands of photographs under computer control. These could be used to select the most productive bacteria for industrial use. Breakthroughs in genetic engineering may open up a whole new realm of biology. Until recently, it has been very difficult to identify specific genes on animal chromosomes. But with new techniques of gene splicing, scientists have begun to map the uncharted terrain of the chromosome. Stanford University biologists have made a remarkable photograph of fruit fly chromosomes. While trying to locate a certain gene on one chromosome, they found to their surprise that the gene's DNA code was repeated dozens of times. 
To explain this important finding, the scientists came up with a new idea. Just as each letter of the alphabet is found in many different words, each gene copy may play a different role in the life process of the fly. Biologists are now busy testing this idea. It could be the key to the miracle of growth, helping explain how a human being develops from a fertilized egg. The new molecular biology is leading to cures for genetic diseases. It may enable us to engineer our own genes and influence our destiny. It might even lead to complete knowledge of the secret of life. But is it possible to explain life in terms of chemicals and molecules? Or are there profound mysteries beyond the gene? While raising hopes of great advances in medicine and biology, recombinant DNA research has also created a major controversy. Tinkering with the stuff of life is not without its risks. Some people are afraid that a bit of DNA spliced into a harmless bacterium could create a deadly germ. Others fear that mixing genes from different species could have unpredictable effects on evolution. Government agencies have enacted strict controls for recombinant DNA research. Most scientists say that if these guidelines are followed, genetic engineering is not dangerous. With today's technology, we can only add a few foreign genes to bacteria. But a hundred years from now, we may be able to mold genetic structure as freely as a sculptor shapes clay. The question is, Will we be ready for the power to change life?